the day has passed delightfully. Delight itself, however, is a weak term to express the feeling of a naturalist who for the first time has been wandering by himself in a Brazilian forest. Among the multitude of striking objects, the general luxuriance of the vegetation bears away the victory. The elegance of the grasses, the novelty of the parasitical plants, and the beauty of the flowers, the glossy green of the foliage, all tend to this end. A most paradoxical mixture of sound and silence pervades the shady parts of the wood. The noise from the insects is so loud that it may be heard even in a vessel anchored several hundred yards from the shore. Yet within the recesses of the forest, a universal silence appears to reign. To a person fond of natural history, such a day as this brings with it a deeper pleasure than he can ever hope again to experience. After wandering about for some hours, I returned to the landing place, but before reaching it, I was overtaken by a tropical storm. I tried to find shelter under a tree which was so thick that it would never have been penetrated by a common English rain. But here, in a couple of minutes, a little torrent flowed down the trunk. It is to this violence of the rain we must attribute the verdure at the bottom of the thickest woods. If the showers were like those of a colder clime, the greater part would be absorbed or evaporated before it reached the ground. I will not at present attempt to describe the gaudy scenery of this noble bay, because in our homeward voyage we called here a second time, and I shall then have occasion to remark on it.